Hi, and welcome to the third Dread Delusion Dev Diary. This time, we'll be taking you on a journey through the game's open world and exploring its mechanics in a bit more detail. But the game does have a central storyline, we've designed the landscapes to be packed full of optional content, and most of what we're going to be seeing today could be entirely skipped by another player. So, our character has just been exploring a bit already, and we've stumbled upon the central town of Hallow. There's plenty to do and see here, with every building you see being fully explorable. In this basement, for instance, we've noticed something is strange about the candlesticks down here, but we don't have a high enough lore skill to decipher exactly what. To solve this puzzle, we'll have to do more adventuring to increase our delusions, which are the key attributes that govern our stats. So, by speaking to a few of the denizens of Hallow, we've already picked up a quest to track down a lost airship and recover an ancient artefact. This is surely a fitting adventure, but before we set off, we should stock up on supplies. There are a number of shopkeepers here with a range of goods, but we're just going to pick up a telescope from the Imperium of Oddities. And in fact, by using this, I think we might be able to see the ship we're looking for but we need to make our way through some treacherous marshland first. This region is patrolled by goblins, who don't take too kindly to folk like us. Our rusty sword is looking a little worse for wear, so we're going to use stealth to evade them by crouching and keeping to the shadows. As we edge through the forest, we're able to collect some crafting items, including iron ore and a number of peculiar herbs. I'm sure these will come in useful later. Deep in the marshland, We've stumbled upon a house owned by a strange dweller who won't seem to stop babbling about mushrooms. But if we can indulge his eccentricities with our charm skill, he lets us inspect his prime specimens, which bags us a glimmer of delusion and some items. We're also going to use this guy's alchemy station to brew a couple of health potions. I have a feeling we might be needing these. And sure enough, we eventually emerge into some crumbling ruins where the horrifying tentacle monsters don't seem too happy to see us. And while the ship we're hunting seems to be just up that mountain, we can't avoid that foreboding dungeon rising above the horizon now, can we? So let's plunder its depths and see what we find. Only I think we've had enough of these tentacle guys for one adventure, so we're going to look for an alternate route. This secret entrance will do the trick, especially if we equip some thieving equipment to help get past this locked door and any traps we might find. Lockpick challenges are handled with a dice roll, and with only a limited amount of picks, this will really help us maximise our chances. And with that, we're able to get to the dungeon's treasure room, which bags us another glimmer of delusion along with a nifty spell. All that's left now is to scale that mountain, leap to the airship, and search for that artefact. The crew seem oddly unaware that they've drifted off course, but once we uncover the eldritch artefact we've been searching for, it becomes clear that their humanity has long since diminished. Something's clearly wrong here, and we've been out so long that night has fallen, so let's not stick around. We can use a teleport spell to return to Hallow. Now that we're back somewhere safe, we can use a crafting station to upgrade our sword. The only trouble is, it's night time, so we'll have to lockpick our way into the weapon shop. But, with a bit of breaking and entering, we've finally got a better weapon. Maybe we won't have to do so much skulking in the bushes next outing. We can also spend some of those delusions to increase our stats, which means we can deduce the hidden workings of those candlesticks and uncover a hidden secret. Finally, we can rent a bed at the Wobbly Noggin to pass the time and replenish our stats. We can hand in that quest in the morning. For now, we need to sleep. And that concludes our little adventure. I hope you've enjoyed getting a small taste of the game mechanics at the heart of Dread Delusion. Be sure to hit subscribe or follow us on Twitter for future updates on the game's development. Peace out.